What is up, guys? So, this week has been very long. <laughs> it's a long week at work, and then on top of it, uh, my plan this week for a video was to take this out and go for a cruise and a couple little things. But then we got a huge snowstorm, which is like the most snow, most snow we've gotten since I moved here, but it's starting to melt already. And then a couple days ago, if you saw my story on uh, Instagram, my Toyota blue head gasket. And I just finalized the test and yeah, turned yellow. So yeah, it's really unfortunate. That truck is like my main vehicle. It's what I use to do everything around the house with. Long story short, behind that vehicle when I bought it, um, it was from an older guy. He said the engine was rebuilt 30,000 miles prior to me buying it. And I've only put maybe 8,000 miles on the truck. So yeah, it's very unfortunate. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet because it is time and money and space because I already got cars in here that I'm taking apart. And if I pull that in, it's gonna block everything in. And it's just, I don't know yet, unfortunate. But regardless, we're gonna find something to do today. So what I think we're gonna do today since nothing went as planned this week with the weather and a car and my truck blowing up, I'm gonna just show you how to remove the rear disc conversion off of an Integra. Just kind of, if you don't know how to do it, just so you're prepared. If you find one of these at the junkyard, something that you can either make money off of or upgrade your Civic with, which is the same rear disc conversion I have on my EF hatch. So, yeah. And before you give me crap for parting out this Integra, if you haven't seen my other videos, this thing is totaled. It is a salvage title car, front end wrecked, rear end wrecked, Bondo everywhere, interior is clapped and spray painted, like this car is absolutely trashed. Um, I'm in the process of pulling the engine, so I'm going to be doing that soon, but yeah, just a part out car. So first, I want to just try to see if I can break this loose. It doesn't look rusty, but there's definitely a lot of dirt in there, so get that off. That way I can keep the line with the rear disc conversion itself. And I always put a little bit in like the back where the line goes into the nut because in case it's um, seized in there as well as the threads. Good break or a bad break? I think we're good. I'm not going to take it off all the way yet because I don't want to get dripped on even if I have a can on it. So I'm going to get the rest of the bolts removed or loose and then right before I drop it I'm going to take that off. And obviously there's a few different ways you can do this. It just kind of depends on your application whether this is going to go back into an Integra or into an EG or an EF. Um, these control arms won't work in like an EF, EG setup. Uh, I'm pretty sure they won't work in an EG, but I know they won't work for EF. You gotta get different kind of stuff or whatever, like the tow arms in the front and whatever. But anyways, the way I'm doing this, I'm gonna remove these two bolts here, the lower control arm from the subframe, and then uh, the shock body, I'm gonna unbolt from the bottom. That way there's less stuff dragging when I drag this out of my garage later when I'm done parting it out and I'll take the shock off afterwards, but yeah. And I'm gonna be lazy by cutting the ABS wire because this is most likely going out of Civic and they won't need it anyways. Just save some time. So you're gonna to wanna to cut it right here because it bolts to the control arm here and that's going that way and this bolts to the subframe and goes that way, the brackets. So snip it right here. So I'm going to remove the toe arm from right here. It's also easier that way because you need a wrench if you do it on that side. And I forgot to, well I didn't forget, I was kind of looking at it before I decided, but I'm going to leave the brake cable with the car for now, so I'm going to remove 
this bracket. This is your e-brake cable. So remove this bracket and then I'll show you how to take it off of the caliper as well. So it's fairly simple to take this off. I usually like to take the little clip right here off first. If I can get it off. Kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. All right, yeah, I got it off. So that just pops out from right there. It just locks that in the same way it locks this line into this bracket. So take that off. And then this is where it actually hooks to your caliper. So there's a little cotter pin here. Pull that out. And then this pin, it looks like a flathead screw, but it's not. Let's pop that off. Should probably make sure my e brake's not on. That'd be inconvenient. Hold on a second. All right, yeah, my, my e brake was up. So it makes it a little easier to come out that way. And then you're going to have to feed it through the hole. It's kind of hard to video this at the same time, especially because my phone wants to tip over on the, um, whatever you call it, it's the phone holder stand thing. All right, got it popped out of there. And then there's this little rubber grommet right there that you want to feed through there. So it gets stuck right there. I just kind of push it with a screwdriver and then from there you should just pull right through Now that I'm hooked on something. Oh, there we go Definitely easier with two hands, but I'm trying to video it for you guys yeah. There you go, it's all disconnected now so we can finish unbolting everything. I'm gonna unbolt these because they're underneath is just being on the ground is a pain in the butt obviously so unbolt these and I'm gonna probably leave this one in to leave it hang until I'm ready to drop it completely but I'm gonna take that one out next Sway bar link. We are trailing arm bushing. There is one here and then one on the other side right there. This one kind of in, like I said before, to hold it up while I remove everything else, and then that way I can kind of drop it down as one unit, at least until I'm out from under the car, because it's kind of a pain in the butt to maneuver down here. Next, I'm going to go for the lower shock bolt. And then you might have to try to pry this out. Kind of one of the reasons I left the trailing arm bushing in so I didn't tweak the um, floor control arm. So I'm going to try to pry this out. There we go. And now, since I don't have to be under this side anymore, I'm just going to. Let this go. Then I'm probably gonna have to pry 
this out as well. And now that I'm done being under the car, I'm going to remove, well I'm going to take this line off completely and then remove this clip and that'll let that free. And lastly, I'm just going to take these two bolts and let it basically drop. And there you have it. And it's basically the same thing for the other side, so I'm just going to do that quick off camera. The only thing different is kind of the reason why I didn't do the brake cable is you have to take the heat shield off and stuff where the exhaust is to get the actual cable off. It's a pain in the butt. So just gonna take the other side off. And there you have it, rear disc conversion for whatever you may put it on. And just a side note, the e-brake cables fit in a EF hatch, at least 90-91. I know that for a fact because that's what I'm running in mine, and the e-brake works. You just have to route the brackets a little bit different. It, you just do it as you go, kind of to route them up, but works perfect. Entire rear disc conversion will go in a 90-91 EF hatch. Might work for 88-89, not sure, because I know there's slight differences like the seat belts and whatever, but regardless. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. Sorry it wasn't anything too extravagant this week, it's just kinda how my week went. And kinda playing it by ear. So with the weather and everything and truck blowing up, it's just whatever. But regardless, hopefully next week the snow will be melted and I'll be able to take the EF hatch out and I also want to do something to it as well. So this car has this header in it and I want to see if it will fit in my hatch. So one of the biggest issues when building an EF hatch, or well, an EF in general, is trying to get a header that fits. And this one fits, but yeah, it sits way too low. I mean, as you can tell, I've hit it 
scrape it on quite a few things. So I'm not sure what the brand is on this header. Don't really care because it's not like I'm boosted or anything where it's going to have high pressure and really high heat. But this one, as you can see, sits much higher, like flat with the oil pan. So maybe we'll swap that onto the EF if it fits with my test pipe and go for a test drive. And if you made it this far in the video, here's a little update for you. So we did get cleared for licensing to use this font. And yeah, these are vinyl stickers and we'll be making them available hopefully by the next video. So if you want one of those and this, I'm not sure how big we're gonna make it. Either leave it that big or have a smaller option as well. But yeah, just kind of playing it by ear. And we still plan on making t-shirts, possibly hoodies. Um, I might fill it out with just t-shirts first to see how many actually sell and yeah, go from there. But I, I have to make a test run first. I want to get a good brand t-shirt that's not going to shrink and make the logo look all dumb. Like when you, I hate t-shirts when you buy them and they have something on them and you wash them and it gets all wrinkly or they're like the shirt around it gets all weird. So I want to get a good quality t-shirt, so I might buy a couple of different brands to feel it out. And then if I do hoodies, it's going to be this brand because this is what my work use. And it is very tough. I mean, I use this hoodie every week and I wash it every single week. And I've had it for years and it's holding up. It's not fraying. The um, threads aren't coming out. So I might actually look up, see if these, this brand makes t-shirts and try one of theirs. It's not like a nice, plush, comfy sit in your, I don't know, beanbag chair hoodie, it's a work hoodie, so I'll probably do the, these brand if we do go to that, but anyways, if you like the video, I appreciate it, like, subscribe if you want to stay up to date, and follow along with the other projects, the EF, the GSR, the RT4 wheel drive wagon, I plan on hopefully working on here shortly, or at least diagnosing some more issues on that, but anyways, I appreciate you guys watching and subscribe to my Instagram, Kanjo underscore brothers, if you want to see more and kind of my daily stuff in the shop and whatever. It's entertaining to some people, I guess.